Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very proud to host today uh, my uh, special guest, the special guest of our TV channel, Mr. Reinhard Klochik, who is, serves as the Secretary General of Pan European Union, a uh, permanent organization, who, uh, which actually um, kind of a think tank uh, or gathering um, which promotes uh, European unification, European integration, etc. So, Mr. Klochik, uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, Mr. Kluczyk, um, um, during, uh, let's say, the last week, the station is pretty much escalating between Russia and Ukraine. Um, last Saturday, we saw a uh, fire on um, a Ketchin bridge, so bridge which was built by Russia as a symbol of annexation of Ukrainian Crimea. And on Monday, uh, uh, Russia... Uh, actually sent, sent uh, about 80 rockets, uh, rockets uh, to, to Ukrainian territory, demolished uh, many buildings, some kind of uh, social energetic, ener energetic um, infrastructure. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. obviously we see that the situation between Russia and Ukraine become more escalated. So uh, Austria usually tries to, um, let's say, stand in the middle to um, keep contact uh, between, uh, let's say, with all parties. And uh, uh, it uh, really comes from Austrian, uh, Austrian philosophy. Austria is not a member of NATO, so Austria tries to stay neutral, not only by constitution, but by, let's say, um, by, by, by its political uh, daily life. So how the situation changed in Austria, bearing in mind that you had uh, uh, presidential elections last week, um, was Ukrainian-Russian uh, war on the agenda, and uh, how Austrian uh, media outlets responded to uh, Russian uh, missile attack uh, on Monday? Well, two questions. The one is, uh, how did Austria react on this attack by Russia? Um, I mean, the reaction was clear. If you read uh, what uh, the Minister for Foreign Affairs said, then this was a clear statement against this new escalation of, uh, of uh, terror against uh, Ukraine. Um, and maybe to make one comment on that, because uh, in the beginning, some media wrote that this would be the revenge for the action on the bridge, on the catch bridge. Uh, I don't believe in this thesis because you don't start such uh, an attack as it happened on Monday morning, uh, just as a re revenge because something happened uh, the day before this was planned. And this is a part of the terror Russia is uh, is doing against Ukraine. Uh, and the presidential election, well, there's a clear result. The president who was president for the last uh, six years, uh, Alexander von der Bellen, is re-elected in the first round. He doesn't know, have to go into a second round. Uh, but foreign politics did not play a role in this election campaign, does normally not play a role in such election campaigns. It's the state president. This is just the feeling uh, of inner Austrian feelings. The president still has sometimes this uh, image of being the, the, uh, the old emperor, the old man sitting in the Hofburg who is there and calming down the situation. I think this is this played much more role than uh, the situation in Ukraine. Mr. Kluczyk, um, what is about, um, uh, let's say, your own perspective on the situation between Ukraine and Russia? Uh, if uh, you know that um, there are now different plans, different, uh, let's say, overviews, how uh, uh, this war can be settled down and uh, how can peace uh, come uh, on the table. And uh, actually, you know, I, as well as many Ukrainians, they're pissed off with different plans which are uh, promoted by different uh, European intellectuals, according to which Ukraine has to sacrifice its own territories in here, <laughs> Asia, Lugansk, Donetsk. Um, so uh, as a prerequisite for coming down the dictator. But we understand from the history um, that uh, you can't, uh, let's say, uh, you can't uh, 
come down the dictator by sacrificing your lands because then dictator will come and take other lands. We see it even from Ukrainian Russian perspective when Russia annexed Crimea, then let's say Russia uh, started this invasion on uh, December on uh, February 24 this year. So um, what is uh, let's say your perspective and like-minded people perspective how the station uh, can be solved? Um, do you see any shift in uh, public opinion in the West uh, in direction that Ukraine uh, uh, has to be supported unless it fights back all the territories? Once I read a definition about intellectuals, and this definition said that intellectuals are people who are not able to use their brain. And when I hear about these intellectuals who always speak about peace, uh, and that we need a peace plan, uh, I'm sure this definition is correct because none of these so-called intellectuals has any kind of plan or idea how to stop the war. They just talk about stop it. Yeah, who is stop, has to stop it? There is uh, clearly one aggressor, this is, uh, this is Putin, and uh, he doesn't want to stop it. Uh, listen to what Lavrov said, uh, we can stop the war if Ukraine gives up the territories we have occupied. So this is a clear message. They don't want. They don't want to be sent. They go on with this terrorist attacks. Unfortunately, I don't. I personally don't see a solution uh, for peace talks at the moment. Um, there is not enough pressure on Putin at the moment to bring him to back to the table for negotiations. So. It, the only chance I see at the moment is that the Ukraine uh, goes forward to gets back some territory with the support of the European Union and with the support of the United States and with the support of other countries in the in the Western uh, in the Western world. I don't see any big change in the opinion uh, of people. I mean, just to come back to the election we had uh, in, in Austria on the state president, many candidates who wanted to kick him out of office yeah, came with a lot of ideas, uh, we have to stay neutral, we have to stop the sanctions, we have to stop the war, we have to do this and that and that. So what the same what the so-called intellectuals say, uh, but the result is ridiculous. So I don't see any change, no. But we have, we have to support Ukraine to be able to bring more pressure on Russia. Um. Mr. Kluchik, we are talking about, uh, let's say, uh, stationary uh, inside the European Union, how uh, Russian invasion to Ukraine affects EU solidarity. I think the Russian attack on Ukraine uh, made the European solidarity stronger. Uh, this is the result we can see in politics. Uh, I mean, yes, there are opposition parties and populist parties who are against this, uh, this solidarity. Uh, take Viktor Orban, but Viktor Orban, two or three days ago in, uh, in Berlin, he said, uh, well, I'm not, against, I'm not against the sanctions, I'm just, uh, I just would like to reorganize the sanctions. So he's not, a, he says that he's not against it. Uh, the solidarity in Europe for Ukraine, I think, is still there and is very strong. Uh, Mr. Kluczyk, uh, if you're talking about, let's say, situation with Hungary, uh, Hungary tried to forestall many uh, initiatives by Brussels, including a ninth uh, sanction package against um, Russia. Now, do you see, uh, as a Secretary General of the European Union, that it's high time to change not only the mode of um, voting in the Security Council, but also think about a possibility, uh, let's say, to impose um, sanctions uh, on some members of the European Union, not only in case they breach, uh, violate some provisions of uh, EU law, um, but in case, uh, let's say, they, uh, uh, try to conduct um, uh, a separate policy uh, towards state uh, represent a threat to European Union in general? 
I don't think that we need sanctions against countries which uh, do not follow all the ideas coming from the European Commission or several countries for new uh, packages of sanctions, etc., etc. But what we need in the European Union is, is to strengthen the foreign and security policy. And this means that uh, there has to be a solution which says that not a single country can have, can we, that not single countries can veto the decisions. So we have to come into a modus with a majority vote uh, in questions of foreign security policy. And last question. We are heading towards the uh, 100 years since the establishment of uh, Pan-European Union. You are the Secretary General of Pan-European Union. So um, could you please tell uh, briefly uh, how you are preparing for this event, who will be president of this event, and, and why this event is, uh, let's say, important for Austria, Ukraine, whatsoever? Well, as you know, Pan Europa is the oldest organization for the unification of Europe. It was created in Vienna and what it was created with a special approach, and I would call it a geopolitical approach, because in the beginning of this movement, there was the clear idea that uh, Europe should play a world on world uh, politics, uh, which means that we need a united Europe because of foreign and security questions. We don't want to be conquered by Russia, as the founder of, uh, of this organization, Rove Karegi, wrote it, nor do we want to be bought by the Americans. We have to play our own role, and we have to care for our own role. And I think this is a very clear message, and we want to underline this message in this, uh, in this Congress, uh, which takes place in Vienna, 17th to 20th of November with a lot of experts from politics, economics, uh, civil society, and I hope also some high rep representatives of some states will come. We are still talking to them and try them to convince to come. And the European Union as a division, as a branch also, as far as I understand, existed in Russia, not only in Ukraine. So what is the situation with, uh, let's say, pan-European division in Russia? Um, is it active or not? Uh, well, once, and this is many years ago, we had a group of uh, pan-European in Russia, but the situation there does not allow an organization like ours is to, to uh, have activities. So at the moment, we don't have any, any contact in Russia with pan-Europeans. But we have a good, working, strong, and uh, fine organization in Ukraine with uh, people. And although some of them are now in EU countries, uh, they are still very active. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Kulichik, for a very interesting conversation. For uh, our audience, we'd like to remind that today we hosted uh, Mr. Reinhard Kulichik, who serves as Secretary General of the European Union. Uh, Austrian division. Thank you very much, Mr. Kluge. You can have a nice day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.